Final Survivor, Laura Lee's Demons. Interview with Laura Lee. Del and I started dating in 2008. Del moved into the house shortly after that. We tried to have a normal, happy life. And yeah, things were great. Life was pretty good. <laughs> we moved in, the house was normal. There was nothing strange about it at all at that time. But it didn't take long for that feeling of bliss to quickly disappear. I didn't usually remember my dreams, but this particular dream, I remember like I had it last night. In vivid, vivid detail, I've never had a dream like this that it seemed so real. I found myself outside. There's a tree in my front yard. There was a man in the front tree. It was very evil. It was his skin. It was this white, sickly, glowing skin. And as I looked into his eyes, he spoke to me. He called me by name and said, hello, Laura Lee. I can give you anything you want, wealth, fame, you name it. All you have to do is agree to follow me. No, I don't want anything. I remember telling him, get out of here now. And he said, oh, no, 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 no. I'm not going away that quickly. He then proceeded to tell me he was a demon. Whenever you see a crow or a raven, you're going to know it's me. <laughs> and I screamed at him. There was a flash. I woke up shaking, crying, and in a complete sweat. I've never forgotten this dream. She said uh, something talked to her in her dream and mentioned there'd be signs that would show up. I was absolutely terrified. I couldn't understand why I would have a dream like this. When we sleep, our subconscious is completely wide open. It's the perfect time for something supernatural to come in and make contact. It's easy for them to manipulate you. If a demon comes to you in your dream, essentially it is trying to infiltrate your life. Once they root themselves, it becomes harder and harder to get rid of them. It wasn't long before Laura Lee's disturbing nightmare started to become a chilling reality. Right after the dream, I started to notice ravens. They seemed to always be in that tree where the dream was that I had. They were showing up every day. They'll just come in and it'll be like a murder of crows. Just a whole whack of them, just right there. Crows and ravens are messengers between our world and the world of the dead. If you have evil in your surroundings, you're going to see them. In certain religions, crows or ravens are known as bad omens. We associate them with the demonic. Laura Lee's dream was terrifying and a harbinger of the evil to come. Shortly after the dream, I did do some research to find out, is there any truth to this dream? Does something like this actually exist? And found out a little bit more about this entity. 
there was a symbol with this particular entity. He could be represented by a crow or a raven. I was taking some food out of the oven. As I was pulling it out, the oven door was completely down. And all of a sudden, it sprang up onto my arm and burnt me. Twelve hours later, it turned black, almost like a brand. But the creepy part about this mark is the outline of my burn completely matched this entity symbol. When all of this started increasing in frequency for me, it completely affirmed that the information I'd been given in that dream was now starting to happen to us in real life. The attack was just the beginning of the terrifying activity in Laura Lee's home. You would hear your noises in the house all over the place. All of a sudden, we heard this smash, and we're like, what the hell was that? There's a curio cabinet that hung on the wall. Somehow, this had lifted up off these hooks. It flew 12 feet over into the living room. It had all my treasures from when I was a little girl, from birthdays, little crystal animals, things from my grandmothers that are now deceased. Oh my. The demon didn't just want to physically hurt me. Oh. It's going after me emotionally now, too. <laughs> Laura Lee believed the demon from her dream was responsible. Then, it turned its attention to Dell. I became very worried that it wants to make us aware that it's here. And all of a sudden, boom, I get hit. Laura Lee Potvin had been visited by a demonic entity in a nightmare. And ever since, Laura Lee and her partner Dell had fallen victims to strange paranormal activity, which had escalated into violence. All of a sudden, and I got smashed right in the shoulder. It was like actually pretty significant. And I turned around like, and there was nobody there. There's something that is not physically natural happening in the house that I can't explain. All of a sudden, boom, I get hit. It hit me in the center of the chest, and I went flying, ended up in the cabinets. And I was stunned, like, I just got body checked. And I thought I got electrocuted or something. checked out the fridge. Is there an electrical short? Because I didn't want anybody else to get electrocuted. Nothing. I can't explain that part at all. When Dell got thrown, that was terrifying. It has that much power to throw a fully grown man. What else is going to happen? That's when we started to really worry. It could hurt or kill somebody in our home. Thank you. 
Laura Lee had reached her breaking point and knew she needed outside help. All we needed was somebody that could help us remove this from our home. Come in. The psychic medium said, I can hear drums. drums. That is my sign for something extremely old, extremely ancient. He did describe to me what he was able to see. I see a man leaning against a tree. And what he was able to see was identical to what I had witnessed in that dream. As that happened, the wind picked up. You could hear it howling outside. My heart rate was up to about 160 beats a minute. I, I was terrified, but to tell you the truth, if somebody else can see this and I haven't told them about the stream, I'm not crazy. This is real. He then almost passed out and he had tears just streaming down his eyes. All he said was it was demonic. He confirmed it. He had asked for it to be crossed over into the light. He was told by his guides and angels that wasn't possible. There was something powerful in our house. Be gone. I really believe it just irritated and aggravated it. The psychic intervention had been unsuccessful leaving Laura Lee and Dell in a dangerous situation. After the psychic had been to our house, it made the activity much, much worse. The next night, I was sitting right by the laundry and I was having a smoke. Dell could see me in the bedroom on the security camera. I set up cameras because there was a lot of break-ins around the area. Laura was in the laundry room. She was sitting down, and all of a sudden, she gets up. <laughs> and he said it looked like I was like a marionette. My arms were just moving. I don't remember this. He said, I stood up and I was talking to something and laughing. <laughs> I don't remember it. <laughs> she was pointing and talking to somebody no, in the corner. The movement on the camera was, I was watching TV, I was like, what's going on over here? Uh. It's just sort of half asleep, half not asleep. I went in there and said, who are you talking to? Hey. Hey. Get away from me! I, I, I felt really angry and I don't normally feel that angry and I said don't talk to me that way and all he said was Laura get out of here we'll talk about it when you're out of this room <laughs> and all of a sudden now she's irate right because I disturbed her and she's she started getting all pissy I basically pushed her out of the room whatever was happening there I can't explain it as soon as I left the room, the anger started to dissipate. I remember thinking, 
My goodness, I, I, I'm not normally like this. I don't feel angry like this. <laughs> Once I removed her from that zone, things started to normalize with her. It was the energy in the room, just the negativity around me that, that made me feel that way. Demons can definitely control a person's actions and body. They are very strong, powerful energy. We are made up of energy. We're not that hard to manipulate. <laughs> we got into bed. Del fell asleep. I laid awake there and was thinking about this whole incident. Why did I not remember this? Nothing like that had ever happened before. Once Del was asleep, it had probably been about 45 minutes, and I was still laying there awake thinking about all of this. It was almost like he was seizuring. He started just like violently shaking. Del? Del? Del, honey, Del, wake up! I remember grabbing him and pulling him up and shaking him, saying, Del, 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 wake up. Wake up. Del, 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 wake up, wake up. And that's when he started choking. Del! Del! I, I thought he was going to die. <laughs> Laura Lee Potvin and her partner, Dell were being terrorized by a demonic entity in their home. Del. And the terrifying Del. haunting Del. had now become a matter of life and death. He started choking. Del. Del. It was like this black stuff, almost like a thicker mucus. He was choking on him. I, I, I've never seen anything like it. Del! 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 I, I thought he was going to die. I was bent over the side of the bed, puking. Just this stuff coming out of my, out of my mouth. I felt like somebody was like crushed me. I was terrified because I'm thinking, what the hell is going on here? When a person is choking up black mucus during a demonic attack, that usually means there's a possession trying to take place. The demonic entity is trying to get in. I really do think he would have died. I mean, he started this violent shaking. Down. And then as I was trying to wake him up, he starts choking almost to death. He couldn't breathe, he couldn't get any air in. Had that happened and there had been nobody there to help him, would he have been awake enough? Would he have been able to get out of bed and find me? I don't know. It was the most terrifying night ever. After that, and I don't want to cry about this, but it's because it sounds crazy, but... <sighs> Could have lost him. I know I keep asking why. Like, what did we do to bring something like this to us, not bad people? I mean, this has affected every aspect of our life. And it's still not ending. After the near-death experience, Laura Lee and Dell had to take desperate measures. Since this happened, one of us, either Dell or I, has stayed awake to watch over. Somebody is always aware and is awake because you don't know what's going to happen when you're asleep, right? <laughs> the 
living like this, wondering about what could happen next. This stressful, but that's the way it has to happen. My biggest fear is one of us dying. That's my biggest fear. After countless attempts to get help from paranormal experts, Laura Lee and Dell were left on their own to deal with the demonic entity. Every time we try to contact and they're all gung-ho for it, they seem to run for the hills. I told them that he'd be here now. We believe in a higher power. We hold the hope always that we're gonna find somebody that will be able to help us. There has to be help out there. Demonic hauntings are traumatic events. When they occur, the terror is unimaginable. And the danger of being seriously hurt becomes all too real. Paranormal Survivor Season 4, Web of Darkness. Interview with Alicia Babcock, take one. I was kind of in awe of the old architecture within the house. It was, it was beautiful, and I saw the potential of the house. My first impression of the house was I felt comfortable. And I really didn't have any eerie feelings. While Alicia saw the beauty of the home, her son Carter did not feel the same way. I started to feel strange almost immediately after moving in. It just had a weird feeling to it. Almost sinister. You okay? Yeah. yeah. But soon, Carter wasn't the only one getting a strange, eerie feeling. probably started noticing something was amiss in the house. Probably within the first week or two. There was a hallway right outside my bedroom door. I would hear walking in the halls. Alicia Babcock and her son Carter had moved into what they thought was the perfect home. But they were soon being haunted by an eerie and unseen presence. Alicia would hear footsteps and strange whispering coming from the hall. I just kept hearing that throughout the night. You're thinking it's Carter. 
so, you know, you'd get up and look in and... He's asleep. There was also the sound of objects being dragged across the ground. And of doors opening and closing. The attic door at nighttime would open. It would just kind of pop open. You could just hear the latch pop. When I would go upstairs, even though you would hear footsteps dragging or boxes moving, nothing would be out of place. But Alicia couldn't escape the feeling that something was wrong. I knew that there were things going on that I couldn't explain. Right outside of my bedroom, the door would swing open. And then you'd hear it creak. Back and forth, back and forth back and forth, back and forth. It was a hardwood, heavy door. There was definitely a lot of energy going through the house. I had assumed it was a spirit of some kind. Something about it just made me think that it was more negative. The strange activity soon escalated into something far more disturbing. Carter had some pretty intense experiences in his bedroom. Objects in Carter's room began to inexplicably move by themselves. It was almost like someone was playing with the exercise ball. It would roll a few feet sometimes, sometimes it would go all the way across the room. Then I'd wake up and I'd be in a whole new place. But that wasn't the only disturbing activity taking place. Carter would hear things in his closet. He was hearing noises in the middle of the night. He was feeling a presence. He would hear his clothes hangers, you know, going back and forth on the rail. It was like a sinister, demonic feeling. And then things became truly frightening. My bedroom and Carter's bedroom butted up to the same wall. I also was laying in my bed and heard some stuff in my closet. There was this shadow and it went from floor to ceiling it was dark, like darker than the room. It was one fluid movement. I mean, just almost like a gust of wind, like a whoosh right out. I mean, just right 
from my closet straight out into the hallway. <laughs> the mirror at the end of my bed exploded. And all the glass hit the dresser on the other side of the room. You know, that was the moment that I went, oh, okay. And I knew that there was something there. Didn't know what it wanted, but there was something there. Demons and other spirits use mirrors as an entranceway into somebody's home because mirrors are traditionally thought to be entrances to another universe or another dimension. An entity, a demon, a spirit can then enter into a mirror and then come out at will wherever it wants to. The paranormal activity would soon turn darker, more malevolent. I was by myself one evening and I was just watching TV. I was laying on the couch and I started feeling kind of heavy. My chest was heavy. It got harder and harder to breathe. It almost felt like a blanket from head to toe was laying on top of me. And it just kept getting a little heavier, a little heavier, to a point where you start to panic. I was afraid for my life. Alicia Babcock's life was being made a living hell by an evil spirit. But soon, the sinister activity took a shocking and dangerous turn. It got harder and harder to breathe. I could feel pressure. When I wasn't able to get up, it was unnerving. It was scary. And then it just literally felt like it felt like it just disappeared. <gasps> I had a weight on me, and then as quick as it came, it was gone. <sighs> I do believe that it was something paranormal. I think the message was, I am here, and letting me know that it can physically interact if it wants to. evil spirit in the house had made itself known and was eager to show its violent intent. The first time I scratched, I thought I did it with my sleep. It was three perfect scratches on his back, just three marks that went straight down about this long and bright red. The number three often depicts the sign of the Trinity or the mocking of the Trinity. So when an entity scratches or is trying to mock someone, they will usually put three marks, three scratches, three bites onto the person. It's incredibly significant because it means that it's mocking faith. It's mocking of the Trinity, which is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. To live there, it felt like you were constantly being harassed. It was almost like getting bullied at school, but you didn't know by what. I think it was trying to show dominance because he or it lived there before and it saw us as a threat. I felt like it wanted something from me or wanted me. 
I really did worry. Where is this going to go? And how far out of hand could this possibly get? Fearing for their safety, Alicia reached out to paranormal investigator John Hines and psychic medium Deanna Reynolds. Right away, I had a feeling that what we were dealing with was definitely something negative, possibly something even demonic. Deanna immediately picked up that there was something negative. Hey, oh, hey. You okay? And she told us she was feeling sick to her stomach and um, was very nervous about the investigation. Hey. You okay? We immediately felt this feeling like something just isn't quite right. Something just doesn't really want us to go up those steps. John and Deanna pushed on and moved up to one of the most active spots in the home, Carter's room. We asked Carter if he would mind joining us up for an EVP session. When you walked in, you immediately felt like you were walking into a room filled with oatmeal or something. It just, you just really felt heavy, When a demonic presence is within a home environment, often there is an oppression or a heaviness in that environment. That heaviness is something that they want you to feel because they want to get under your skin. They want you to know that they're there and they really want to possess you. Not even like 30 seconds later, we actually started getting a lot of activity. There's a bad energy in this room. That started us on the path of trying to question and draw out some answers as to what might be there. Who are you? Questions like, what's your attachment to this room? And then we started getting PX audio. PX Audio, it's a device that is able to pick up on a number of different things in the environment. It picks up EMF, it picks up magnetic fields. It has a, a built-in vocabulary. The team started to get voices on the recorder and the sensor picked up activity aimed at Carter. I got like a really cold chill. At that moment, we heard the name Hector. It took me a moment to make sure that I actually heard that right. When I realized we really did hear Hector, I was concerned. Hector is a Greek name. It literally means to hold or to possess. Hector is actually a minion of a much more dangerous and probably darker entity, an actual demon called Horon. He is oppressing Carter with the idea of moving beyond, oppressing him to possessing him. And within seconds, he said, suffer. So 
Alicia Babcock's son, Carter, was in danger of being possessed by an evil spirit. Terrified, Alicia called in paranormal experts to help rid her home of the demon. He said, suffer. 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 Hector, he wanted to make himself known. He wanted to be there. He wanted to intimidate. Suffer. To suffer. And then he said, yourself. yourself. Hector definitely made Deanna and I feel like there was some danger there, not only to the family, but even to us. This thing had already demonstrated that it could do things in the physical world. I mean, it can move things. Scratching and, and injuring Carter. This thing, if it is a demonic entity, and at this point we were believing it was, it could do a lot worse. Not wanting to provoke the demon further, John decided to end the investigation. When we talked to Alicia about what we found, we did tell her that we felt there was danger here, especially with Carter. And we talked to them about having the house cleansed. I was concerned because this was probably going to escalate badly unless something was done. We cleansed and, you know, we saged the entire house. And we just made sure that, you know, we had good feelings, positive feelings that we were telling whatever was there that it wasn't welcome and it could not stay. This is not your home. You are not welcome here. John had told us that mirrors can be portals from wherever the spirits are to where we are. The portal test is you put your finger up against the mirror, and if there's a space between your finger and your finger's reflection, um, it's portal. The full-length mirror that I had replaced, the one that exploded, was actually a portal. So we decided, rather than try to seal it, we were just gonna get rid of it. Despite the cleansing, Alicia was still concerned for their safety and decided it was time to move out of the house. I think what I would do differently would be to get help sooner. The experience definitely made me realize there is some kind of paranormal activity out there. The most terrifying thing with this experience was the fact that it could be physical. <laughs> this kind of opened my eyes to the fact that not everything necessarily has good intentions. 